A microgravity environment like that aboard the International Space Station can offer scientists an opportunity to study biological and physical phenomena and processes without the masking effects of gravity. The ISS has an extraordinary opportunity for researchers to access the laboratory. It's the most capable laboratory we've ever had in space and uh, we have crew members doing operations on experiments full time every week now. Because of that, new experiments that can use existing hardware can get to orbit in as little as six months. And sometimes if a user needs new custom-designed hardware, they still can fly as soon as they get that hardware ready to fly. Microgravity has both facilitated the development of novel advanced materials and provided a unique vantage point from which to study biological samples. Understanding these phenomena and processes will improve the understanding of nature, which will enable improved industrial processes and improved consumer products, helping scientists and engineers to build more efficient machines and consumer products for both Earth and space applications. It could also help astronauts stay healthier while in space for long durations. How matter is organized and moves on the microscopic level <laughs> profoundly affects the macroscopic world. The Light Microscopy Module, or LMM, allows scientists and engineers to directly observe what is happening on the microscopic level in microgravity. We're doing uh, research on the International Space Station because it teaches all about our st stabilizing systems and our, and our products. Stabilizers keep everything together to make sure that uh, when somebody uh, buys a product and uses it, it keeps um, all the materials basically uniform throughout the product. So as I said, the space station provides us a really unique opportunity to learn about the physics of these problems. Uh, usually the physics is very complicated. With gravity, there's lots, lots of uh, movement of the samples and it becomes very hard to detangle things that are intrinsic um, to the physics and things that are uh, gravity driven. We need to separate those two pieces in order to understand the problem better and so the microgravity environment gives us a unique opportunity to do that. The LMM uses a modified commercial Leica RXA laboratory microscope. It is configured to operate in an automated mode, allowing interaction and manipulation of experiments from ground-based staff and researchers supporting the in-flight ISS crew. The LMM allows detailed characterization of fluids, colloids, two-phase media, and biological samples. Aboard the International Space Station, the LMM is located in the Fluids Integrated Rack, or FIR, in the U.S. Destiny Laboratory Module. The FIR provides the microscope with basic laboratory infrastructure, including an optics bench, temperature control, power conditioning, illumination, imaging and frame capture, data processing, and more. The LMM, coupled with the FIR, forms a true space-based laboratory for microscopy reducing payload development costs and enhancing results. The process for getting your experiment to the space station is just the same as the process for getting an experiment done in your laboratory at home. First, you need to find the funding, find a source of support for that, and that can be through NASA, through a research announcement, but it can be through another government agency or a private sector uh, partnership. Then uh, once you get that funding, you start planning the experiment, working with someone who's experienced in space, just like you would work with someone experienced in setting up a new experiment in your laboratory. And then after that, you plan the operations, we carry them out on orbit, sometimes you talk to the astronaut crew, and then you get your data home and analyze it. NASA Glenn Research Center engineers equip the Leica RXA with 23 micromotors, permitting remote control by scientists on the ground and a tremendous reduction in ISS crew time requirements in space. This tends to increase the available time for research, and time is the key. Experiments vary in the amount of time that they get in space. Of course, we try to get experimenters to use as little crew time as possible, uh, just because that lets us have more experimenters at one time. And so a lot of experiments can be automated, where a lot of things can be controlled from the ground. Some experiments, because of their nature, for example, experiments using the human crew as a subject, take more crew time than others. Uh, but what we found is that we're able to support about 200 investigations every six months on the International Space Station. Lenses allow magnifications ranging from 2.5 times to 63 times, and with oil-coupled objectives, they can increase to 100 times. The microscope uses simple backlighting and epi-illumination through the microscope. A commercial condenser will be added to provide bright field illumination. High-resolution color video microscopy, confocal microscopy, 
dart field and phase contrast capabilities are in development. The light microscopy module uses existing electronics of the Leica microscope, supplemented with unique and innovative internal and external electronics to support enhanced automation and superior imaging. Motors and linear actuators motorize the microscope's manual functions. Two identical high-resolution black and white cameras can be mounted on the headpiece, one coaxially in the viewing axis of the microscope, the other can be mounted at an angle on the tube assembly. An additional small surveillance camera can be mounted inside the auxiliary fluids container. The auxiliary fluids container, or AFC, is the LMM's main work area, where sample cells are processed and fluids or shatterable materials can be contained. It consists of two sealed glove ports and an attachment port for the equipment transfer module. This is how experiment samples are transferred from stowage to the LMM. The equipment transfer module, or ETM, is loaded with experiment modules on the ground and launched to space. They are contained on the ISS until samples are used in an experiment. This allows materials to be transferred without the risk of damage or contamination release. Inside the auxiliary fluids container, the experiment sample is always moved relative to the fixed objective lens of the microscope. Motors on the translation stage assembly and in the body of the microscope automate movement of the sample across the XY plane and along the main axis or Z direction. The LMM can image regular and specially microscope slides containing colloids and can also view opticels. Opticels provide oxygen transport through a membrane and provide containment for the biological sample and the sample medium. Commercial applications are welcome on the International Space Station. Back in 2005, Congress designated the ISS a national laboratory, opening it up for users outside of NASA, from commercial companies, other private sector users, nonprofit organizations, and other government agencies. And all of those users are now under an umbrella of management organization called CASIS, the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space. And this organization is helping to grow that side of our applied users uh, from about 25% today to a much larger portion in the future. The light microscopy module aboard the International Space Station offers a unique opportunity for innovation and new scientific knowledge for commercial and academic applications. The use of this international facility by U.S. and international scientists will continue to advance human understanding of fundamental physics and biology.